Hello once again, people, and welcome back. So if you may have seen that video that I did just recently about the uh, Lenovo ThinkCenter M900 Tiny, where I added a second uh, Ethernet port to uh, that machine so that it can be used uh, as like a network appliance, like a router or something like that, uh, something that would require uh, two Ethernet ports. And after I did that video, I was like sitting here at the bench, just, you know, I was kind of contemplating my uh, questionable life choices and all that when I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head. A picture of this. Th oh, shoot. Sorry. Wrong movie. Um, anyways, <laughs> I thought of uh, another way that I could potentially add the uh, cables that came in the box with uh, minimal uh, modification or actually no modification to both of these boards uh, other than like pulling off the uh, the headers. And it, I totally didn't even think about it previously. And I think uh, if I would have thought about this a while ago, things could have been like much easier. But it's uh, basically another option for uh, doing this, uh, hopefully. I have not tried it yet. It just, like I said, I just had the idea. But there are these right angle header plugs that you can buy that come in uh, these like dual uh, row versions. And so if we were to, well, I'm going to have to pull off all these uh, cables here to try this out. But if we remove all the uh, wires and instead solder in these like right angle plugs, I think in this particular machine, there's at least enough room to be able to connect these cables that come pre-bundled with this card. Uh, the only little bit of modification that I think I'll need to do here is to actually push this uh, little plastic piece here that holds everything, everything together a little bit further back because as is, if we plug this in like right here, uh, you see that we've got quite a bit of a gap there between where this uh, pin uh, bends down and where, it, uh, and where the plastic here, the edge of it actually is. So I think we'll get a little bit more room in like this direction see if we line it up right there you can kind of see how this might interfere with the with the SATA uh, connector right here so if we can scoot this back and make it so that there's a little bit more room for this connector to fit in there i think this might work and i don't think the height of this connector here like the width is enough for the connector here to interfere with the little SATA caddy because there actually is quite a bit of room like that if you can see there below that connector so i think this could work and is uh this video is basically an addendum to uh, that previous video that i did and we'll see how well this works out if uh things still don't fit then you know this is not going to be a great idea but i thought we would at least uh explore it and see how well it goes and pulling all of these wires out is definitely going to be a lot easier than installing them because all i got to do is uh, pull on it and unlike the other video where I used braid just to make this process here go a little faster, I'm just going to use my desolder uh, vacuum here just uh, so that I can do this quickly. Okay, so there we go. Got all those uh, holes cleaned up and everything. All right, now we need uh, two 10-piece uh, chicken meals. I mean, uh, two pieces of 10 uh, pins each. So I'm just going to break these off where they split and see if I can do this by hand. No, I think I'd be better off trying to uh, get it to separate using some of these cutters here. There we go. One. Two. And then I need uh, two uh, four pieces, or two pieces of uh, four pins each. Just like I did with the uh, wires that I soldered in here, I don't want these pins to uh, protrude very much. As you can see, they're, they're super long. So what I'm actually going to do for this particular um, project or scenario is that I'm going to cut them flush with the board. It's not something you'd normally want to do, but that way I avoid having like anything uh, sticking up out of the bottom. And I'm going to do it before I solder them in. So that way when I uh, solder them, like I don't have to do any uh, cutting after that. I can just leave it like undisturbed. But I think maybe first of all, we should push this in. All right, so I'm going to try to use this piece of metal plate here and stick it in there. And then I'm just going to use it to uh, support those pins from the back and then just push on the plastic. Yeah, that's working pretty well. So now you can see that the bottom ones here are sticking up further than the uh, top ones. So now I can push on the top ones there. I'm just going to I'm just gonna set this down like that. And I'm going to push on the plastic and I'm just going to try to make it so that they Align with the tips of the bottom row there. So yeah, that looks uh, pretty even. Let's see if it actually 
goes into the board. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So now we can uh, actually push that connector in a little bit further. And it looks like it's actually going to be like flush with the edge of this board right here. So that's a uh, pretty cool coincidence. All right, so now uh, get to trimming these. And it helps if the uh, very tip of your cutters here isn't totally flat. So I'm gonna get another set that I have. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go, this is better. Oh, shield your eyes. These pieces are flying. So I'm gonna do it like this, that way I don't have a little pieces of metal flying everywhere. There we go. All right, there we go. So it's not totally flush with the board, like a little tiny bit will stick up, but that should not uh, affect anything. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, four pin parts. All right, so these are uh, ready to solder. I'm just gonna put some flux on them. And because they don't really stick up a whole bunch, it's gonna be pretty quick to just uh, go through and solder everything. Okay, so that one's done. Okay, and for the actual network interface adapter, I'm gonna do the same thing pretty much. I guess the only time this would be a problem is if for some reason you need to use that hole underneath it to mount the board. But as long as you're using like uh, this one or this mounting point, then that should not be a big deal. Uh, that will not short out anything because it sits like way below the level of the pins. So uh, that's uh, not going to uh, affect anything. So yeah, I'll finish uh, trimming all of these and uh, soldering them in. And then we'll see how it fits on the, or inside of the case. Okay, so both parts are ready. And now we can uh, check and see if it will actually fit in the case. So don't know if uh, it'd be a good idea to put these on before we put the uh, jack here into the case. So let's see, where's pin one? So pin one is this one right here, corresponds to that red pin there and pin one on, on this board was, all right, yeah, it was this one right here. So this has to point down in this direction. Like that. And then the uh, four pin connector, pin one is up here in this corner. So it's got to go like this. Okay, so let's see, will that clear? Oh yeah, actually, eh. Oh, not quite. The corner right there is just at the right, uh, length to interfere a little bit and yeah they're up close you can see how the very edge of that connector there does not clear that SATA connector and trying to force it down it really does not push in any any further the only other thing we could do is pull that plastic piece off of the pins now that they are securely attached to the board although that's going to make them a slightly less um structurally uh, strong but let's see how well that works. So I'm just going to pull this off and it's going. There we go. So yeah, each uh, individual pin now is a little bit flimsier than it would have been otherwise. And it's not clearing the edge of the board. Actually, I think what's stopping it now is actually the is the pins themselves. They can't go any further into this housing. Yeah, I can't push them any further. That's as far as they go. So I think the only option would be to like trim a little bit of this uh, material here back just a bit to allow the uh, plastic there, the housing to clear the SATA connector. So I'm just going to put this part back. Just going to remove these pins here from the housing first. All right, so I removed the pins from in there. I'm just going to trim these pieces off here a little bit. And it's basically inside of um, these two little blocks right there. So I'm also going to remove that a little tiny bit of that divider. I don't want to remove too much because then it's going to potentially allow these two here to uh, touch each other. So just trimming back a tiny little bit of each piece or each. Um, position and also trim a little bit of the housing right here on the on the outside okay so that's definitely uh, not awesome and not what I would want to do so we can trim this one here just a little bit better but I guess if uh, you really want to do this 
then this might be the way to go. So let's go ahead and repopulate these connectors into the housing. And oh yeah, that doesn't that doesn't look like they're at risk of shorting out or anything. There's no way they can move all that close to each other, as you can see right there. So we could even uh well I guess we can't really trim them back too much uh, more because now we're like dealing with the end of the actual metal pin there. So I think that's about as much as we can trim off that. So let's try this again and see how well it works this time. Oh, now it went in no problem. <laughs> so yeah, just trimming off that tiny little bit of plastic off the housing there. Whoops, dropping stuff. Yeah, there we go. So that lines up pretty well right there. And I mean, it's got these wires kind of pinched up against the the housing of the uh, SATA connector, but it's not. It really didn't take that much force to stick in there or anything, so it's not that bad. I'm just going to put one screw on the back here to hold this uh, jack in place. All right, so that's uh, just kind of secure in there. Uh, security just a little bit, just enough to, uh, so we can try this out. Uh, these cables are definitely a lot longer than the one that I made, so it's going to require some tucking in here. But let's go ahead and uh, put this card. Actually, let's uh, populate these first. So let's see, pin one on this one was, I believe, ah, okay, it was this uh, bottom corner right here. So this is going to go in this direction. Like that. And then this one went in this direction. So it's like the red ones are pin one on both of these cables. So just like that. Let's go ahead and pop this in. And let's see if we can fit the the drive caddy in here. So these want to pull out. All right, so let's make sure that this is going to clear. Yeah, that works. And I can still put the uh, little thumb screw right there to hold this down. So this definitely an option, but as you can see, we've got a lot of cable sticking up right here out of the back. I don't know if there's enough room underneath that fan there to tuck some of it in. Let's see. Maybe we can bring this around like this. All right, I'm going to pull this out of here and bring it around the top. But let's see if I can get this to tuck in this section here a little bit. That might help. And then plug it back in. All right, that's uh, it's kind of possible right there. Okay, I think that's probably about as good as this is going to get and still allow us some, some room there to close up the case. So let's put this caddy back on. So, yeah, it's uh, a little spaghetti looking over here on this side, but let's uh, power it up and make sure that we can actually get it to connect. I'm not going to bother uh, trying to show this like in Windows or anything again. I'm just going to uh, see if... Uh, plugging in a an Ethernet line gets these to start blinking. So here we go. Got a power supply. And we'll plug this in. And it's going to uh, do like a blink and then turn off as it's acquiring an IP. And then after that, it should turn on and they should be on steadily. Ah, there it goes. So turn off and it should come back on. There we go. Starts to blink. So this works. And <laughs> it's another option. And it's definitely a lot faster than what I did. That was uh, pretty much the um, sole purpose of this video, just to investigate if this was a potential option for uh, using one of these cards. It just requires getting some of these uh, right angle uh, pin he headers. And that's it. You just got to do a little bit of work to both of those boards and uh, you're good. So, yep, yeah, that's uh, going to do it for this one. It was just a, a quick little investigation. I hope that this information can help somebody out there, anybody. <laughs> so. Uh, Thank you for watching and I will see you guys around the bench.